For decades, Saudi Arabia, as you know, has been at the forefront of spreading and funding a radical form of Islam known as Wahhabism. How important uh, is it to put pressure on the royal house of Saud to put an end to this form of extreme Islam? Well, this can be argued. The Wahhabi movement, uh, currently we're speaking, we want to be realistic, currently is pushed by the extremist imams, which Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has put most of them in prison, and many of them have fled the country and are now in exile. So Mohammed bin Salman, uh, honestly, even though we can criticize many of his actions, uh, many of his uh, doings and, and beliefs, but at the end of the day, he, him as an individual, he is combating the extremists. And that uh, shows that we we are heading in the right direction, but maybe it's not enough. We need to do more. So the Saudi royal household, we can't put pressure on them. They are not religious clerics. They're not like the Ayatollahs in Iran. The Ayatollahs in Iran are religious clerics. We can blame them for the terrorism that comes out of their country. But Saudi Arabia, they are kings. They're not religious clerics. We can't blame them for the, the religious activities, but we can sure tell them to crack down on the extremists within their nation. So it's a matter of being realistic and, and, and tackling extremism with a strategy, not just generalizing. Uh, the Trump administration this week is thinking about designating the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization. Is this a good idea? Yes, and I made a tweet this very morning saying that if this happens, then it will shake the entire Islamist empire. The Muslim Brotherhood is the most organized uh, extremist terrorist organization on this planet with banks, institutes, politicians. It has inroads into every parliament you can think of. And the best example is what's happening in the American Congress and what is happening through organizations such as CARE that have been designated as a terrorist organization. So yes, I do support it and more power to President Trump. Uh, finally, you call yourself an imam of peace and someone who wants to reform Islam. You've taken a lot of heat from your fellow uh, Muslims, can Islam, sir, be reformed? No, it cannot be reformed. I do not call myself a Muslim uh, Islamic reformer. I call myself a Muslim uh, reformer, which means I believe in reforming Muslim societies. I don't believe in reforming the religion. If it's not broken, then you can't fix it. Islamic reformation is man-made. Muslims will never leave the Quran in order to follow a man-made version. So instead, I focus on the Muslim mentality and liberating the Muslim mindset, working on communities and individuals. And some of that, from your perspective, is about joining Christian Jews, when they are uh, persecuted for their faith, you as a, a Muslim believer stand shoulder to shoulder uh, with your other co-religionists who suffer for their faith around the world. Of course, we are all brothers in humanity before brothers in faith. We're all hu human beings. And if I don't side with you against ISIS that wants to kill both of us, then what is my purpose in life?